You know, I'm, I I think I have a perfect answer for this one because I think that I w- I would like to say that they're confusing, but the reality is is I'm actually I've cracked the fucking case You've like Scooby Doo. Okay. Because what it is is that Art Smith is just way too convinced he's the smartest guy in the room, and it's killing this team. He should be a GM. That's I mean at this point <laughs> <laughs> he no I mean seriously at this point what the reality is is that the Falcons have everything that they need minus the QB and I'm not I'm not going to sit here and act like Art Smith has not heavily hindered by his QB situation. No, he totally is. But games like this, I'm, you cannot sit here and use QB as an example. This is a prime example of when you're trying to do too much and try to get too creative and does not play to your strengths and you're trying to always find new ways to win instead of just going with what works. Like, that's Art Smith to a T. And unfortunately, <coughs> it's killing this team right now. He has got, for whatever, for whatever reason, he has to feel like the smartest guy in the room or I guess the smartest guy in the field. And it is, I and mean, I just can't emphasize it enough, it is the only thing holding this team back from having, not the only team holding this team back, let me be clear, but it's the only, team, the only thing holding this team back from a playoff appearance this season. I mean, Tyler Algier, 14 carries. Bijan Robinson, seven. And none after he fumbled. And, and you, it's funny because it's like, you know, I, I, I hear me, I hear it, but it's like, did we really think Bijan was going to be perfect carrying the ball well, every also, single snap? My thing is, you have Chuba Hubbard playing better than both your running backs. Both That's, of them. That was, you know, the one note I had from this game, maybe the most exciting note from this game because of how shit it was, I think the biggest winner of the season for the Panthers is Chuba Hubbard. He's shown that he's legit RB1 in the league and he still has not gotten paid and he's going to say, you know what, soon enough, I'm going to be doing somebody might want to toss me a little something. Well, I think my thing with the, the biggest issue with the Falcons for me is like you have Kyle Pitts, Drake London, B. John Robinson, regardless of your quarterback, you should be scoring more than seven points. Oh, you know, it's it's inexcusable. It's it, it's like the amount. And that's the thing is when you watch the play call selection, too, there are so many head scratchers from art every single week. And I was the, you remember, we were the biggest art defenders a couple years ago, and it's slowly been a like I'm trying to think of a good analogy here. He's just he slowly showed us our true colors where we're kind of like, wait a minute, uh, that's yeah. not the art I know. Yeah. Hey, that motherfucker fooled me like slowly but surely backing off. And it's like, he, he has, he, he's very rigid in having to be the guy that was the genius, I guess in his mind. And it just doesn't work. I think the Falcons are probably the team that let me down the most this year. I think we are both pretty like, uh, I will say, especially after week two excited about their potential. And I just think they have shot themselves in the foot. They can't stop getting in front of each other, uh, in front of themselves. So, um, yeah, they're very disappointing. Obviously the Panthers are very disappointing. Um, a, a two point win over a division rival who is six and eight. I did want to give it, real it, quick though. I had to, cause I almost forgot. Yeah. The shouts to Bryce young for this game, like the six for six on the game winning drive. Cool as a cucumber. That is the Bryce. I know. Give the man an O line, give him receiving core. I'm telling you, don't count him out yet. He is going to be Tua a 2.0 with the way he develops. Call me crazy. Now I'm, I, I love having it on our record. Now. Tua to a 2.0. And I feel like that has to be a clip. I, I'm telling you, everyone, because if you said it about Tua when he was struggling, you were, I remember, I remember because Connor was getting that flack. You're insane. You, 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 he sucks. You don't realize it. Hey, hey you know what? Connor's laughing now. I'm going to be laughing then. Okay. So let me ask you this before we move on to the next game. <clears throat> this off season with all the changes that are going to come for the Panthers off season draft free agency. Are you banking on there being more boneheaded moves or more galaxy brain moves? Like where it's like, you ready for what are you doing? Or it's like, okay, you are ahead of the curve. Oh, well, you already, you should know my answer from how I feel about the man himself. Mr. David Tepper. Okay. Tepper. I think he has shown very clearly. He might be the king of boneheaded decisions. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't like to harp on a guy. I'm sorry, but Mr. Tepper, the decisions over the last three years, to say the least, have been an atrocity. We could start in tracing it back to trading CMC for virtually nothing, um, especially the way things have panned out. It's just there's so many questions around the decision making that the Panthers approach their uh, they approach the season with every season since he's come. And I just feel like this offseason is going to be another trying to rush immediate results, which is his M.O., and with a guy like Bryce that is going to come to a crashing avalanche. It's just like, so to answer the question, I bro, I have no faith in David Tepper as do any Panthers fans. So it's like, 
I would lean towards the boneheaded decision consistently. I think every Panthers fan would agree. 